having fun. We've got a little air show going on in the background, so we're going to talk to you and see if we can get through an interview here with Colin Serrano yes, of Airtime Aircraft. And we've spoken to you before, Colin, about your two place. And I'm looking over your shoulder at one of your two places there. Before and the, the floats themselves are part of the airframe. So. Ah, okay. So the, let's talk a little bit about the floats, and then we'll get into this particular aircraft. They appear to be a metal float. Am I seeing that correctly? Yes, it's uh, aluminum, uh, T6, uh, T6 aluminum, and uh, all TIG, TIG welded and a little bit of MIG welding on them. And do you make the uh, floats, or how does that work? Yes, we manufacture them in-house in, -house in uh, Fort Walton Beach. Okay, Fort Walton Beach, and you do, do you do the whole everything? I the mean, whole obviously, shebang. Not, obviously not tires and engines and stuff, but other than that, you do it all the airframe? The, uh, the wing itself, we get from North Wing, and okay. then uh, we get the motors from Rotax, typically, and then we build everything else in-house. Okay, great. Well, the, uh, the, the wings I know very well. I know Cameron Blevins at North Wing. He's a great supplier to the trike community. He's been doing that for a lot of years, kind of knows what he's doing. Yep, And absolutely. the wings handle great. I've known that for Fantastic. many, many years. So that's great. And, and this particular one, I see you've got a hearth on because this one's a single place. Yep. Tell me more about this particular one, which is kind of our focus today, Colin. This one's, uh, this one's a newer bird. They've been made in the past, but um, we've been um, doing a lot of re-engineering re on them to make it uh, the, the aircraft that uh, we like. It's, uh, it's a true 103, another amphibious aircraft. Um, we have different motor options. This one has a Hearth 50 horsepower motor on it. And again, it's another weight shift control aircraft. It's really a smaller version of uh, our two-seater aircraft. Of the two place, which on those you're using the Rotax 912s on those. Yep. Because they're bigger aircraft, you got to get more oomph to get it in the air. Absolutely. But 50 horsepower, I'm thinking on this is probably going to give it some pretty sprightly performance. Am it I right? Will. You can, uh, you know, you put 250, 300 pounds in the seat, and it'll, it'll, it, she'll, she will go. And a lot of people that know about float flying, which are probably the ones that will be attracted to this video, going, hmm, maybe I could afford that. They've seen numbers about how long it takes to get off the water. Do you know that number for this aircraft? I, I don't have a specific number at the moment, but... What, what uh, would you guess it to be then? I would guess it's quicker than any other trikes out there <laughs> on the water, I would tell you that. I okay. Could, you know, if I were to guess, uh, you know, a couple hundred feet. Okay, so that's pretty fast. Then. Yeah. That's, that's Three, four, five seconds, something exactly. like that. Would that be right? Yep. Okay, excellent. Now, people will look at an aircraft like this and say, wait a minute, he said it was part 103, but it's got retractable gear, it's got floats. Uh, I think it had electric start on it. Did I see that correctly? Yep. And and some people, obviously under-informed, as we'll discover in a moment, think that means it can't be a part 103, but they're wrong, aren't they? They are wrong. We have uh, an additional uh, float allowance of 60 pounds. Okay. which gives us the ability to, since we integrate the frame into the floats, it allowed us to make a, you know, amphibious trike. So the basic 103 is a 254 pound empty weight. A lot of people know you get a little allowance for a parachute, but some people don't know you get an allowance for floats. Absolutely. And now when you're making floats part of the structure, you're economizing, you're not taking an existing aircraft bolting floats to it and now maybe boosting the weight up beyond the 304 that you're allowed, right? Yeah, yep, exactly. Okay, so how long have you been doing, you said you did this before, but you've, you've kind of gone back to the drawing board a little bit and you've done some new things with this. How have you changed it? What were those improvements that you thought of, Colin? You made it uh, stronger and, um, and it just flies better and just better quality craftsmanship. We're CNC, we're using a router table to cut out our parts, better powder coats. Generally, you know, structurally a, a, a better, you know, new and improved aircraft. All right, cool. So this is a weight shift aircraft for those that haven't already figured that out. But what's, so what's it like to fly a lighter aircraft? They can maybe imagine, okay, a bigger machine's going to kind of be a little steadier on water and in air. And I'm sure that's true, yeah. but how is this one to operate? It, it really flies very similar to our uh, two-seater yeah. aircraft. It takes off real well. Our floats are, are long enough to where they track real well in the water. Um, they get up on plane real easy with the step that we have. And, um, and as far as saltwater goes, the, the plane is made out of... Uh, Aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium landing gear. So none of which is much, particularly affected by salt water. Exactly, right? as much non-corrosive material part, you know, as we can, you know, possibly use on it. Now I want to ask you about the float a little bit. I've had a bit of experience with float flying, and to my eyes and to some other people's eyes, the point of step that is where the bottom of the float 
has that little upward notch in it, which is an important thing to getting off the water. You've got to separate from water, which sort of sticks to the bottom of a float if you don't have some accommodation for it. But the, the step looks sort of far forward to some people who have only seen them on regular aircraft. How do you answer that question? Um, well, it is designed that way. Um, it's uh, in a weight shift control aircraft. We're not um, taken off like a general aviation aircraft where, or fixed wing a a aircraft, I should say, where you're pulling up an elevator and then pitching those floats upwards. You know, our hang point is from uh, the center of the aircraft. So the step helps break the inherent grab of the water and the location of it works great for the type of aircraft that we fly. It's particular to the weight it's, shift that allows yes. that particular. And it's designed for, yes, our weight shift control aircraft. So um, so folks can maybe get an idea at that. When they look at a trike taking off of land, uh, they'll see that the, the wing goes up, but the carriage stays just the same. Yep. And when it finally gets in the air, then they, some people say that it's swinging forward. Well, it is, but it's mainly just orienting itself underneath the aircraft, Absolutely. which now is stable. And the, carriage catches up with it. Is that, yes. And that's how it works on water too. Exactly the same way. So you're racing along in the water you, as you get up to speed, which is pretty quick as you said, you're going to get up on that just on this forward portion of the float. Well, it, it gets up on step and it's uh, a little bit of the forward portion of the float and then a little, a little bit, bit on of the, the back. far aft. Huh? Yep. Okay. It's just riding on almost just those two points. So you get, and four all together. Yep, so four points of, together. Which makes it quite stable on the water Absolutely. then I'm guessing. Okay, great. Yep. All right, so you convinced me about the floats, Colin. I understand how that works now, and I hope all our viewers do as well. So now you've been in the water. This is in the water position here. Gear is up. Show us how you put the gear down when you're done flying. You get back to the beach. You want to taxi up on the ramp or right onto the beach or whatever your situation is. Show us how that works. Yes, um, it's a very simple retract system, mechanical. It's one little latch button right here. You your release, okay. And the gear will swing right down and the same thing to bring it up, press in, press it in, pull it down, and snap it in. Pretty simple. And typically what will happen is, is, you know, as you're getting close to the shore, you'll drop your gear down and uh, the owner and operator can drive up the boat ramp and then we make a custom trailer for it ah, as well. Okay. And you can, um, you know, drive it basically right up onto the trailer and fold <laughs> your wing up and go, go back to your house and uh, finish your day. Beautiful. Um, I noticed when you were doing the uh, gear, it looked like you had an over center position where when it was when the gear was retracted and then when you let it go, it kind of wanted to go back down then. Yeah, and it also once when it's in the water, the wheels have some buoyancy as well. Ah. So it makes it even easier, even easier than that is to bring the gear up and then to so bring the, the gear down. The tire is actually helping you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then this is just the weight of the aircraft and it doesn't have to, you know, it, it's just very simple. And is there, I hear back. kind of a clocking, is it, does it go into a locked position yes, then? Yes, it locks the gear here uh, in the And that rear. happens in the back yep. then, okay. And, uh, and, and another thing, if you didn't notice it, do that again for us so you can see the articulation of the front wheel, which gets it kind of up and out of the way. Now, uh, Colin explained to me it's a little heavier on this side, so why it tends to go that way. But right where my finger is pointing, there is a stop too that keeps it from spinning all the way around on you yep. or something and doing what you don't want it to do. Absolutely. Then on the way, when you put it back down again, go ahead and do that, it straightens itself out again. Yep. So very clever design and there. You don't really have to worry about that too much. No, not at all. And the only reason why that kicks over there is because it has a disc brake on the right-hand side of the wheel and it's slightly weighted over there. But as you retract gear two, it disengages the front steering and you still have your rudder control which ah, is okay. underneath the aircraft there that's steered on, on water. Yeah, now I suppose the camera can see back here, but there's also a water rudder back here, which you can see operating right now. Go ahead and put the gear down again. And it works as okay, gear so down Okay, so that well. does not move when you move the gear. It's operating just the way it yep. is in that position. Yep. Okay. Does that give you pretty good water authority when you're maneuvering around? It, great, it gives great water authority um, and it's it's really nice not to have to retract a rudder up and down. And yeah, it's right, just leave it in position. Yep. And it's kind of, yet it's still sort of protected by the floats. Yep. So it's when you're on land, you're a, not dragging anything. Exactly, it's just above the height of the floats 
And so um, it's clear of any uh, obstacles that you're uh, typically riding over. Excellent, Colin. All right, Colin, I've, you know, I've run out of questions. I think I've asked you everything I could ask you about the single place amphibious part 103 bundle of joy here. Tell us uh, how people who have even more questions that I didn't think of can reach you to ask those questions. I would go uh, directly to our website, airtimeaircraft.com. And uh, we got a lot of great videos and information on there that uh, should help you out with anything you need. Sounds great. That's always good. We're glad to have that. I've got information on this kind of aircraft and all sorts of affordable aviation. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Colin and I out here in the sun and the fun at Sun and Fun. Mm -hmm.